like cats and you viewers. So today I'm using my new camera, so let me know what you think about it. But it's also the first part of my month yeah, monthly favorites. Gosh, I'm already messing up my speech. <sighs> but yeah, monthly favorites. I split it into two parts so you don't get too overwhelmed and I just list everything I love so far. So let's get started with the book first, which is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. And this book was incredible. I loved her debut novel, The Sky is Everywhere, but um, I'll Give You the Sun is incredible. It's basically told from the viewpoint of Noah and Jude. They're twins. Noah's a boy, Jude's a girl. And Noah's side of the story is told when they're 13 years old, and Jude's is told when they're 16. And it just talks about how their family plays out. Like, they have a, you know, kind of a dysfunctional family. It talks about stuff like alcoholism and, you know, romantic issues. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, so I won't say too much, but it's incredible. So, if you liked her first novel or you like really good, just family books with, you know, tough issues, check this out. It's very artistic and it's just amazing. I love it so much. I highly recommend it. It's awesome. It's really good. She's a great writer. I wasn't disappointed at all in this book. And I read it in a day. It was so good. So, so good. So, check it out. Next up, movies. I don't own any of these movies, so I'm just going to have to talk and y'all have to look at me. But the first one is Knights of Bad Astom. Now, <laughs> Knights of Bad Astom is probably the best movie title I've ever heard, but it's got uh, Ryan Quanton from True Blood in it. He played Jason, Stake <laughs> Jason Stakehouse. Jason Stackhouse. It's got Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones and X-Men Days of Future Past, who I adore. It's got Summer Glau from Fi Firefly Serenity, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, stuff like that. And I think those are the only recognizable names. I could be missing someone. But it's basically these people, they, they're a group of friends and they're LARPers and they go to this convention out in the woods and they end up summoning a succubus. It's very cheesy. It's basically like a B-movie but it was made in 2014 so it's, I'm assuming it was done on purpose this way. Everything's cheesy. The succubus looks just terrible. The effects are just, they look like something out of an 80s film. It's just cheesy, but it's so bad it's good. It's really entertaining, and if you like cheesy B-movies, definitely check out Knights of Bad Astom. It's funny, I laughed. I don't really, like, it's hard for me to laugh at films, but Knights of Bad Astom made me laugh. I love the performances. They're, the actors were actually pretty good, but it's still cheesy. But they are pretty good, and it's just so... It was so unique just because it focuses on LARPing and stuff like that a lot of movies don't focus on. So, nice of bad ass them. Check it out if you like cheesy B horror movies, even though it wasn't really scary. The next film is Captain America The Winter Soldier. Now, I liked Captain America The First Avenger, but it wasn't my favorite superhero movie or anything. Captain America The Winter Soldier, I loved it. Again, it's not my favorite superhero movie, but it's up there. It's really, really good. It's such a huge improvement over the first one. I think mainly because, you know, they cut out the character development. Because in the first one, you had to learn the backstory of Steve Rogers and all that. This one focuses on Captain America battling with the Winter Soldier, who was his friend. And the Winter Soldier is play played by Sebastian Stan, who actually has a really wide range of acting. Because he made his debut in Gossip Girl, which I loved. But, you know... You go from playing a vapid playboy in Gossip Girl to being the Winter Soldier in Captain America, and that's just incredible. And Chris Evans does an amazing job as Captain America. Has Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow, one of my favorite female heroes in the Marvel Universe. Of course, it's got Nick Fury. It's got a bunch of awesome characters, and it's just so action-packed and so entertaining, and I loved it. If you liked the first Captain America, watch the Winter Soldier. But I would say watch the first one first. So you know the backstory of Captain America, unless you, like, know the comics, back, like, cover to cover, you know, you know the whole origin story, then I still say watch the first one, just because it's continuous. But The Winter Soldier is really, really good. I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. The next film I enjoyed was Alien. Now, I watched Alien in preparation for Alien Isolation, which I don't know why, because I can't get Alien Isolation probably until Christmas. But I actually really enjoyed it. It was the first time I'd watched Alien. I know, shocker. 
It came out in 1979, and I just never watched it. But it does start off really slow. It's a little boring at first, I will admit, but it picks up as soon as the aliens are introduced. Well, the act just alien. I'm talking about like the face hugger and the chest burster and then the xenomorph. Which the xenomorph looks incredible, especially for a film made in 79. I mean, the xenomorph is beautiful. I mean, it's not like beautiful, beautiful, like, you know, that way, but just the craftsmanship of it was beautiful. Oh my gosh, it looked fantastic. I love the alien. I'm like, right now I'm like on a huge alien kick and I'm, I want to get like a bunch of figures of the xenomorph because it looks so awesome. Like, I love how it's got the two sets of teeth and the skull is translucent. You can kind of see like a human skull figure. I love that. And it's just about a woman Ripley and the space crew of the Nostromo and they have to deal with the xenomorph. And there's even a cat in it. Jonesy. Jonesy the cat. Which, I love Jonesy, so... <laughs> Any movie with a cat in it that's not sad, I love. But yes, Alien, if you haven't seen it like I have, if you've been living under a rock like I have, check it out. It's worth your time. It's really entertaining, especially if you like sci-fi movies or... I don't know if I'd say monster movies, but yeah, check it out. Just check it out. It's the 35th anniversary of it, so check it out. And plus, if you're going to play Alien Isolation, it really does help to watch this movie, I've heard. Because it gives you a little insight into the game. And Amanda Ripley is Ellen Ripley's daughter, by the way. BT dubs. In the last movie I watched, again, basically I was living under a rock, is Blade. Now, everyone knows Blade. Blade's the vampire who is a vampire hunter. Part of the Marvel Universe. I just never had seen it, even though I'm a huge vampire fan. But I watched it recently because my uncle let me borrow it. And I loved it. I just loved how gory it was. And, you know, it's just action-packed. It's really good. I mean, it's not the best movie out there, but it's really entertaining. So if you like vampires, action movies, you know, stuff like that, and Marvel movies, just check out Blade if you haven't watched it yet. It's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good. I can't wait to watch the second and third ones. Which I've heard the third one's kind of eh. But I'll make up my own, my own mind about it. But I really enjoyed Blade. Which I figured I would since I like vampires, but, you know, I enjoyed it. Moving on to TV, this is the big one. There's a lot, so I'm just warning you ahead of time. But everyone knows October is when all the TV shows basically come back on. And there's been several amazing ones so far, just in the beginning of October. So I'm going to try my best to list all of them. I might have to pick up my cheat sheet over here. But the first one I really, really have loved so far is Gotham. And that's bas it's basically the story of Commissioner Gordon. It's got Bruce Wayne in it, but he's not Batman. He's just a little kid. It's right after his parents are murdered. And it's got uh, the Penguin in it. It's got the Riddler, but the Riddler's not the Riddler yet. And the Penguin's not really the Penguin yet. They call him the Penguin, but you know, he's not the Penguin, if you get my drift. It's got a very young Catwoman. She's the same age as Bruce Wayne, of course. It's got a new character they created just for the show, Fish Mooney, who is pretty badass, I gotta say. And it's just really good and dark and gritty, and that's what I love. I love dark, gritty stuff. And, I mean, it does have some gore in it. It's not super gory or anything like that, but it does have a little blood. It's not afraid to show you people getting killed or whatever. And I love it. I love Gotham so far. Some people have complained that it's just about Commissioner Gordon, that it's not focusing enough on Batman. But really, I think it's very interesting. I think it's a very interesting route to take. I mean, there's so much stuff about Batman out there, but there's not really a lot of stuff about what happened before, you know, Batman became Batman. So that's why I love Gotham so much, and I love that it focuses on Commissioner Gordon, a character that doesn't get a lot of love in the Batman universe. And it's very interesting so far, so if you haven't checked it out yet, and you're a Batman fan, definitely check it out. I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't focus on Batman himself, but it does focus on the Batman universe, Gotham. They talk about Arkham. I'm sure it'll appear sometime in the series. It's just really good. Great storytelling, so check it out. The next new show I've watched is The Flash. And The Flash is really, really good so far. It's only had one episode, so I can't really say that it's going to continue to be good, but I have very high hopes for it because this is a spinoff of Arrow, and Arrow is one of the best shows on TV out there right now, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinions, but... The Flash. It focuses on Barry Allen, of course. The Flash. He's young, and it's, it just focuses on when he became the Flash, because, you know, he was a forensic scientist before he became the Flash, and then 
you know, you get struck by lightning because of a uh, particle accelerator. Think it, particle accelerator? I, I'm not good with science stuff. Anyway, the debut episode focuses on him becoming the Flash. And it's just really good. It's funny. It's action-packed. It even has a cameo by Stephen Amell in it, which is awesome. And it introduces a lot of new characters that haven't been seen in Arrow, which you would expect, because this is a spinoff, okay? So you see Iris, and you see her father, and I can't rem remember his name. You see Detective Pretty Boy, as they call him. He was on the Vampire Diaries. Rick Cosnett, he was on the Vampire Diaries. It's nice to see him in a new show. But anyway, The Flash, if you like Arrow, or you're interested in The Flash himself, check it out. It's really good so far. Grant Gustin does an amazing job as Barry Allen. Trust me, he's really good. And if you've only seen him in Glee, be prepared to have your mind blown. He's really, really good in The Flash. In returning shows now, Homeland. After last season's very shocking ending, which I was not happy with, Homeland debuted with two episodes in one night, and man, there's one scene that has taken the entertainment world by storm, basically. It's all over the internet. It will totally spoil it if you watch it, but if you are really interested in seeing this scene, just type in Homeland Season 4 premiere episode or something, and it pops up. But it's great. If you haven't seen Homeland, it's about Carrie Matheson, a CIA agent who has bipolar disorder, and it just focuses on her life and what the CIA is dealing with. It's just really good. It's really intelligent. It's just phenomenal. It's on Showtime, which I know a lot of people don't have Showtime. So, if you can't see it then, wait till it comes out on DVD, but watch it. It's amazing. Amazing. It's just superb. I didn't expect to love this show, but I do. I'm hooked. And, uh, Homeland, amazing. The next show is The Vampire Diaries. I love The Vampire Diaries. I've loved it since the first episode, and this season is really heartbreaking. I'm trying not to spoil anything in case you haven't watched any of the seasons or if you haven't watched the newest season but it's really good so far and I love it just love the Vampire Diaries I love how it's not afraid to be gory and it's not afraid to pull at your heartstrings it's just so good it's so good and so many people write it off as like a teen soap opera or something with vampires and it's not it's so much more than that it's got heart and soul heart pun in, not pun not intended but it's got just there's so much more to it than just a soap opera, you know? It's just phenomenal. It's one of the best vampire things I've ever seen. Like, I just said vampire things. But like vampire TV shows or anything like that, it's one of the best. So check it out if you like vampires. Definitely, definitely check it out. It's also got werewolves and witches, so yeah, it's got you covered. But it's so good. Ugh. And I'll have trailers for everything I've mentioned in the description box down below, by the way. All the TV shows will have the current season trailers, so if you don't want to be spoiled, check out whatever season you want to check out. But yeah, the trailers will be down below, by the way. The next show is The Originals, which is a spin-off of The Vampire Diaries, but this is a lot gorier. It's a lot more dark, I would say. It focuses on the Michelson family, The Originals, hence the name. But Klaus is one of the best villains on TV. Now, Klaus is usually a very murderous fiend. He's not afraid just to kill anyone that gets in his way, but he is very protective of his family, and he does show emotion sometimes, which I think makes villains great. Because if you just have a villain that goes around killing people and has no remorse, then yeah, it's a cool villain, but you know, you can't relate to the villain. And Klaus is relatable. You want to hate him, but at the same time there's moments where you just want to hug him. You know he's probably going to rip your heart out from your chest, but you want to hug him anyway. So that I just love that there's a show focusing on him and Elijah, his brother, and Rebecca, his sister, and, you know, uh, Marcel, who is an excellent, excellent addition to the, you know, series, which, I mean, the series is just in a second season, and he's been in there since the first, but he's a great character, and there's just so many great characters, and the storytelling is amazing, it's in New Orleans, so it has that jazz flavor, it's incredible. A lot of people actually prefer the originals over the Vampire Diaries, and I mean, if you do like darker, gorier, grittier stuff, I do recommend the originals over the Vampire Diaries. It's way more of all those three things I just mentioned. So yeah, and I'm trying to think. I'm going to have to look at my cheat sheet because I think there's some more shows I didn't mention. Oh, there's only one. American Horror Story Coven, which I'm watching it like right now. Not right now, but you, know, you get my drift. 
American Horror Story Coven. A lot of people actually didn't like this season, which I will admit is one of the weaker seasons. But it's still really good. It's not scary, like the name would suggest. It's about witches, of course, hence the coven. But it's still really good. The storytelling's great. The performances are great by Jessica Lange and Sarah Paulson and Tiza Formiga and all these other different actors, actresses and actors. Kathy Bates, Angela Bassett. They all do a phenomenal job with this show so far. And if you don't know, American Horror Story is basically an anthology series. Every season is a, is a different storyline, different characters, but they use a lot of the same actors. It's just phenomenal. Most of the seasons have been really scary, and I can't wait for Freak Show, which there's a killer clown in Freak Show, and I, I don't like clowns, but I'm still going to watch it. The Coven's not very scary, but it's still really entertaining, so if you like horror TV shows and you don't mind them being really disturbing, because American Horror Story is disturbing, don't be fooled by the fact that it's made by the same people that make Glee. American Horror Story is disturbing as all hell, basically. <laughs> it is disturbing. If you can handle it, watch it. It's amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And now, moving on to the music I like this month. There will be a playlist in the description box down below with a link to each song so you can listen to them. And just let me know what you think about them. I like it when people listen to the songs I suggest because I like to spread that love. And, let's see. Games I like. I just skipped over the game section, but you know what? I only have one game. It's Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition. I really love it. It's really addictive. You know, you create your own character, you pick your class, and you know, it is basically pushing the X button over and over on the PS4 controller, but they did such a great job of porting this to home consoles from the PC that it's just incredible, and it's a beautiful looking game. It's so much fun, like, you have no idea how much fun it is, even though you're just basically clicking the whole time. It's so fun, it's so fun to level up and, you know, get loot. It's always fun to get loot in games, it's so addictive. But yeah, I'm so, so in love with this game so far. And this has the expansion pack, Re Reaper of Souls, so in that increases the level cap to level 70. And it's just so awesome. So pick it up if you haven't played Diablo 3 yet. Pick it up. Or if you have, but you haven't played the Reaper of Souls edition, I really recommend picking it up, especially if you have a next-gen console, because the game looks gorgeous. It looks gorgeous. And it's so much fun. And lastly, YouTubers I like this month. First off is CJR, and I've actually been su the, subscribed to his channel for a while now, but he does like garage shell pickups and video game pickups, and you know, he did his first nerd block unboxing, which I really want a nerd block so bad, but I can't afford the subscription. Anyway, moving back onto his channel, he's got such an epic game room behind him, like, every time I see his videos, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that room! The CJR is a really, really cool guy. And, you know, he's almost at 20,000 subs, so congratulations if you see this dude. Awesome job. I love your videos. They're just amazing. They're really high quality. They're really great. So check out CJR. The next one is Round 2 Gaming, and I believe he's Canadian. And I love his videos. They are kind of lengthy, but I like lengthy videos. And they focus on, you know, pickups, and uh, I really enjoy the memorabilia reviews because I'm a collector, as you can tell from my shelf. So I like to see memorabilia and get other people's impressions on it. So it's really nice to see that. And he does like random reviews of video games. He does a lot of cool stuff and he's such a, just a nice guy. So check out Round 2 Gaming. And lastly is Canadian Retro. Now I know he is Canadian. But he does a lot of garage sale pickups and you know just pickup videos in general, trades. But it's really interesting to see why he picks up and he puts what he pays for the game and what it's worth. That's really interesting to see. And he seems like a really cool guy. So check out those channels. And thank you so much for watching my favorites video. If you liked it, please leave a like. It really helps and it makes me smile. And comment. Let me know what your favorites have been so far this month. And share me as long as you do it nicely. Favorite so your friends and family can see. And don't forget to subscribe and become an alley cat. Because alley cats are awesome. I try to make my channel fun and random and just... Urgh. I don't know what that urgh was. Hulk. I do have a nickname, She-Hulk. No one's allowed to call me that besides you-know-who. But, yeah. Do it. Hit the subscribe button. And I'm gonna go because I'm pretty sure this video is kinda long. Because I'm just enjoying my new camera. But I'm gonna go. Peace and kisses. Bye!